one of the really awesome parts about a personalized learning experience is that students can move at their own pace. But you don't want a student to move ahead without really having the skills that are needed in order to master the level beforehand. So you don't want students on a blue square if they haven't mastered the green circle tasks. So in order to do that, to limit the students and uh, to really keep track of where they are and to let them know whether or not they've built those skills, I create these level up quizzes. Now, in order to make a level up quiz, you're gonna start by going to your Google Drive and click new, go into the more and click Google Forms. So basically, we're able to make a Google Form that turns into a quiz. So to turn this into a quiz, before you start anything, the best thing you can do is to come up here to the settings. And in settings, they have um, a, header, a header over here that actually says quizzes. So I click quizzes and select make this a quiz. Now you can use these different options as you please. But one thing I don't like to have them do is show the correct answers. Um, it does help though, I think, to have them see the missed questions to give them some guidance. Um, I do like to have it release the grade immediately because my goal here is that I don't have to grade the level up quizzes. And really you should make this your goal because then students can get it done and move on or have to just continually redo it without you having to do any extra grading. So once you have that all set up, you can look at the presentation. Um, sometimes I like to show the progress bar. Um, you can choose whether or not to shuffle the question order and uh, whether or not to show a link to submit another response and you know, get creative with a confirmation, confirmation message. Um, in terms of the general aspect, you can um, you know, split hairs here about what you wanna do with your, um, your quiz. But I usually don't have them edit, be able to edit because I don't want them to just edit their answer to get it correct, but I want them to complete the whole thing again because even if they got a question right, doing it a second time is not gonna hurt them. It's just gonna help reiterate those ideas. So I didn't hit save, so I have to make sure that I actually hit save in order to uh, make this that quiz. So you'll know it's a quiz because at the top it's going to let you know how many points your quiz is. Um, but there's going to be some things that you're going to want to add to this quiz that is not, you don't want it to be graded. So if I want them to add their name, it's going to automatically recognize that I wrote name here. It's going to ask for a short answer uh, response. But you could have them write a paragraph response, multiple choice, check boxes, drop down. You could have them even upload files. Uh, a linear scale can be helpful if you want them to rate something from one to five and so on and so forth. So you can get creative with this, but obviously for the name, I just need a short answer. This is a required question because I want to make sure every student's name is added to their quiz. Um, and then we're going to click answer key here because I don't want to grade the name. That should not be a graded question on the quiz. So I'm going to put zero points for this. And um, I don't need to add a correct answer because there isn't going to be a correct answer. Everyone's going to be different here. So I go back to edit question and I can get back to this screen. So let's make a multiple choice question. So let's say which color is the background. So since I'm using this prompt, Google's pretty smart and they're saying a multiple choice question. So let's say red, purple, and green are my options. So what I can do now is I could add other as an option. Um, I can make this required question, which I want to. And if we click the three dots, I do want to shuffle the option order because I want these three choices to be shuffled. In case I always put the right answer first or in the middle or last, it'll shuffle that to add some variability. All right, if I click the answer key, it takes me to choose the correct answers. So it's purple, but if it was red too, I could click both of those, but it's just purple, so I'll just click purple. Now I can make this worth one point or five points or whatever you think is necessary here. Um, since they need to get 100%, I just make everything worth one point. So I could add some answer feedback. Like if it's incorrect, I could say, look at the background or whatever it is you want. You could add a video even to give them some hints. Correct answers, I could say something like cowabunga, if that's how you spell it, maybe an H, and I save it and then it tells me what their feedback is gonna be and I can go back in and edit it or delete those pieces of feedback. All right, so let's go back to edit a question. Now let's say you like this format. You like having a multiple choice question and you wanna add another multiple choice question that shuffles the option order and is required. So in order to do that, I'll click this button here, which is to duplicate. Now it duplicated the same exact question. It's still required, still shuffles the option order, and so it keeps that formatting for you, which can be really nice. So maybe here I would ask them um, a different question, like which color is the text? So I could 
modify that, go to the answer key, check the points, click the right answer, which would be red here. It's not though, it's actually black. But anyway, you choose your right answer and you move on. Now, maybe at first I wanna ask them some color questions, but next I wanna ask them some, some shape questions. So once I choose a different topic, I usually click make a new section. So once they're done with these, they, in the form, they would hit next and it would move into this section. So maybe I'm gonna hit, title this one shapes. Add a question. Um, and maybe in this question, I could say something like, um, which shape has um, three sides? Now, if I'm trying to help them understand how to uh, use academic vocabulary like I do in science, some and or some question like this, I will actually ask them to type it in instead of multiple choice. So let's do that. Let's do a short answer. And um, obviously here, we want this to be a required question. There's no shuffle option order. But what we do want to do, I keep it required, we want to go to the answer key. We want to add a correct answer. So let's say they type triangle. Well, they have to spell it right now. They have to spell it exactly like this in order to get this question correct. So they might actually capitalize it. So let's add that option too. But since I want to make sure they're spelling it right, I'm going to keep these as the only two um, correct answers. Maybe if you think that they're going to say a triangle, you could type that in as well. And maybe you're going to want to type it in in the different ways. Because again, the goal here is to have this grade itself. So put in everything that you would accept as a correct answer here. Now, I'm going to mark, mark all other answers incorrect. So the program knows exactly that it's either right or wrong based on this credential here. Add answer feedback. I could say, um, you know, I could add a picture here or I could say something like try again or look at your science notebook or look at your notebook in class, look at the posters on the wall, whatever you want to do to have some feedback there if they get it wrong. I'll click edit question. And again, I can duplicate this or I could um, go through and add something that's different here. You can also add a title. You can add pictures that would just... Um, Let's go to Google Drive. Let's just find some random picture that I have in here. Um, let's, let's go to science and see if I have any photos. Here we go. A single point rubric PNG file. Okay, so I've got that in there. I could add that and I could have some questions refer to this picture, whatever you want to do. So here's an actual level up quiz that I've created. It's my blue square level up quiz with the name, the class period. When I click on these, you'll see that there's zero points for that. Here's a question that's multiple choice with the correct answer, one point. Here's a question, correct answer, one point. Here's a picture that I used with some questions. These ones I use a check, check box because there's more than one right answer. And then down here, I've got my correct answer in this um, type of short answer question. And they have to type the exact thing in there in order to get it correct. So you can see this is my level up quiz. Now, the reason that these level up quizzes are so awesome is because when you're done, you can click on the responses or when students start to respond to them. And what you'd want to do is you want to click create a spreadsheet. Now, in your first one, create a new spreadsheet and call this level up quizzes. Maybe you want to put whatever unit it is, like unit seven. Okay. So with your blue square one, you want to create a new spreadsheet. But if I was on my green circle or black diamond one now or whatever one I haven't made, the folder for or the spreadsheet for, I would click select an ex, um, existing spreadsheet. And then I could select the one that I made, but I haven't made it yet. So let's do the create a new. All right, so if I create a new spreadsheet, here we go. It's gonna have all the questions up here at the top. It's gonna have what time they took it, um, the score they got and their name as well. All right, so what we wanna do though is we wanna use this Google form in this Google sheet now as a tool to let us know whether or not students got all the answers correct or how many times they're trying or so on. So let me show you one that I actually have that is from class, but I've modified the students' names to not give anyone away here. Um, okay, so here I have one of the sheets that I have from my Unit 7 Physics Level Up quizzes. Now, since I used different quizzes, I can, or since I have all the quizzes on one Google Sheets, you can see down here on the tabs, I renamed them so that I have um, I know who did the green circle, who did the blue square, and who's on the black diamond. Also, I have a free body diagram quiz that I gave as well, and I have that tab in here too. Now, it's super helpful because while I'm in class, I have this open and I can see students as they turn in their assignment in real time, this will pop up. When they get all of them correct, it turns green here for me. So let me show you exactly how I got them to turn green um, so that 
you can do this too. And so you know whether or not a student has completed the task. Now you can see that for some of these students, um, they take their quizzes right in a row and then they get them right. Some students maybe work on it and then later on they get it right. So it's really a helpful tool and the color coding helps a bunch too. So in order to do that, what you need to do is first click on the very top, the letter that is above score. So if score is here, I'd click the C, but it's not. It's in the B column, so I'd click B. Go up to the Format tab, and you're going to go to Conditional Formatting because we want to format these cells based on certain conditions. All right, so you can see that I have something up here already. So let's actually go back to a blank one so you can see exactly what it would look like for you to be successful in making it turn green. So you're going to click the B. Again, Format, Conditional Formatting. This is what's going to pop up. So it's going to apply to all of the B cells, at least 1 to 101, and format the cells if dot, dot, dot. There's a lot of options. But for this, since it's just a quiz out of a certain number of points, I want to say if it's greater than or equal to. And let's say I have a 11-point quiz. So for the value of the formula, I would type 11. For me, I want it to turn green, so this is great, green. If they get 11 out of 11, if they're greater than or equal to 11, it'll turn green. I'd click done, and that's it. As the scores come in, those B cells will get colored accordingly. Now, this is really nice because if I see that a student is on the blue square, I can look up their name here and make sure they have the green circle quiz done. If they don't, I can hold them accountable and say, hey, whoa, time to go back to the green circle. Same thing with if they're on the black diamond. I can go to their blue square quiz and make sure they have it done um, before they move on to the black diamond. One thing I find that's really awesome about this is as the scores pop in, if I'm here on my computer and if I see it, I like to just congratulate the student, give them some props for getting that done. And I think that that lets them know that I'm watching and observing what they're doing. And I can also see kind of where they're messing up. If they're messing up repeatedly on the same question, I can then go help that student. So again, this Google Form and Google Sheets combo of a level up quiz is helpful on so many levels. Get it dialed and get it right. Enjoy. Okay, so now that you have this, you need to know how to get the students to be able to take that level up quiz. So if you go back to your website, let's go to one of my pages. Let's go to unit seven and let's go to the black diamond page. All right, so at the bottom of the black diamond page, I have my level up quiz. And the way that I was able to do that was I went to insert, I put a button in there and I called it level up quiz. Um, and then you can provide a link. Now I could link it to another site, but I don't need to do that. I need to link it to a Google form. So if I go back to my form and go to send, I can click this link right here. It's going to give me a link. I can copy that link, go back to my website and I can paste the link here and I click insert and boom, I have a level up quiz button that I can move around and put it wherever it is that I may want to put it. Now, since this is the site I'm using with my students, I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I don't want them to get confused on the task here. But that's how you do it. That's how you make a level up quiz. Good luck.